We're back with our socially distant studio visit number 22 in our ongoing series of uh, pandemic chats with artists that have exhibited at Hall Walls over the years, uh, kind of checking in on how they're doing, what they're doing, uh, how things are, where they are. And today we're speaking with Esperanza Meobre, who uh, exhibited in a solo exhibition at Hall Walls in 2013, and is speaking to us from Fort Greene, Brooklyn. And uh, as always, I have to begin, Esperanza, by asking, how are you? Hi, um, I'm okay. Um, I mean, it has been tough, um, but, you know, considering I'm one of the lucky ones, I'm healthy <laughs> and I have a home. How, are, how have you found things in your neighborhood in Brooklyn? Um, I'm always interested in the differences in different, because uh, I've been talking to people all across the country and uh, get different um, feedback. I mean, what's it been like uh, just in terms of people's behavior and their relationships to each other? Have you gone out much? Can you tell from that? Well, it has been two months. So it's like, it has evolved a lot from how it was and how it is. Um, in the neighborhood that I am, it's like the Brooklyn uh, Hospital, like one, the, basically the one that's always in the news. Um, so I hear the ambulances. I, I mean, it has stopped because things are a little bit better, but like um, ambulances were nonstop during the day and during the night. So even though if you tried to isolate yourself, you couldn't. So for the first months, I really didn't go out that much. I was afraid and and it was you know the sounds were always rem reminding you that something was happening even if you didn't read the news all the time now that things are calmer and that people go out everybody for the most uses mask and is in social distance and you know it seems like um at the park i i live in the fort green park that is kind of um it's a really beautiful park that it's like two blocks from my home and everybody like some days there's too much people so I avoid it but if you go in the morning there's less people and uh, everybody is like in their six feet social distance situation. That's so. really good to hear because uh, you know it was uh, just in the last couple of days in my former home of Toronto Canada uh, in a park near where I used to live in Toronto uh, this weekend people were out in droves not really wearing masks, not really adhering to social distancing. So it's it's nice that to hear in a big city like New York that um, that people are being um, cognizant of that and being aware of it. Yeah, at least in my neighborhood. I mean, the thing is that I, I remember at the beginning, like people would, would that would call me to see how I was doing, and they they would ask me, and I was like, I know the same as anyone because I was at home. So basically the news that I got was from the, the, the New York Times or whatever I was listening or reading at the moment. So um, I can only talk from my neighborhood's perspective. Like at a certain point, I did a bike ride uh, via Prospect Park that is really big. And depending on what entrance of the park you were, you would have different situations. But so far I'm lucky that in my neighborhood it feels really respectful. Now, your family is in Venezuela, so I was very interested in asking you if you could share any information about what the situation is like for them, how they're doing, and what it's like down there. Um, well, I'm, I'm lucky enough that my family, my immediate family just moved here. Um, yeah, <laughs> by chance. I mean, well, not by chance. They never really wanted to move, but Venezuela is such a complicated country. And my brother-in-law got a job, uh, lucky enough for us here. So my family just relocated. It was a little bit hard that they were escaping from all the Venezuelan um, uh, turbulence and like everything to come to COVID, like lockdown. You know, in a way that we're in political lockdown over there, it's a totally different kind of lockdown but it's as intense in a way and uh, I am I feel very fortunate about that I don't know if they feel so fortunate about being here in COVID times but because my friends that are in Venezuela it's very hard because there's no I mean that because the country is so isolated there's not many cases so that's a good news because there's not much traveling and not much in and out and, uh, but the problem is, is that the country is in such bad conditions that there's no, even though we're an oil 
country, there's no gas. So it's very complicated to get gas and to get like food and stuff like that. So it doesn't seem, it's, it's like not a great place to be right now. So yeah. the, the pandemic is the least of their problems. Yes. So yeah. far, I mean, but look at Brazil. It didn't, now it's there. So it's like this fear that, well, so far it's the least of the problems of pandemic. Now you have a, a, a studio separate from your home, right? Because I think you posted something recently about getting back to your studio. Um, have you, uh, were you absent for a period and did you miss that and did it alter what you were working on and how, how do you feel being back in the studio? Yes, I have a, a my apartment is very small, so I do have, it, it would not be that possible to work at the same place. Um, I mean, only for a small project. So um, unfortunately and fortunately, like in January, I lost my long-term studio. So I had a studio in the Navy Yard and, you know, the reality of the studios in New York City are not, uh, are like, are complicated. So anyway, like I lost my studio in the Navy Yard, like unfortunately and, and kind of um, last minute at the same, so anyway, when this, the pandemic started, all my work was in storage. Uh, I saw, uh, by chance, I subletted a studio uh, a week before, because a week before this whole thing happened, things weren't like how they are. It seems like things were normal. So I am in a sublet studio for, for now. A friend of mine that uh, is in Mexico, she's stuck there. And I have her studio, and that is very nice. At the beginning, I mean, not have, having all my studio and storage, which at a, uh, in January felt like a horrible thing, right now feels like it's very nice because I feel I have the mobility to go wherever in case I have to. Also, you know, like the future is uncertain and studios are expensive. So if I, if anything happens and I don't have money to pay for a studio, I have everything in my storage. So that's, that's, very nice. It's also because we live in such an uncertain time, it feels free to not have the burden of the studio. <laughs> so right now, so the first months that I had this, this studio, I was not coming because I was very afraid of being here, of like getting out of that. Also, it was a new situation, so I don't have all my tools or everything, so it wasn't like inspiring. And as I mentioned before, that the sounds of the ambulance were too intense. So I, I couldn't, like going out of the house didn't seem like something appealing. Now that things are calmer, I've been coming and it, I feel really lucky that I have a place to come and work. And, and finally I can concentrate a little bit more and at least do OCDC drawings that can make me go into another mental state. <laughs> Has anything about the current situation infected your work at all? I mean. I'm not thinking of anything particular in your work that it would affect, but I, you know, I'm always kind of curious about that because um, it is a weird time. And uh, it, it, I, I just wonder if that weirdness seeps into uh, what you do as an artist. Yeah, I mean, totally. Like, it, it, I mean, it has been, it's really hard to concentrate and at the same time, it's like the least of my worries is to want to, or needs, is to create art. You know, at the same time, it's great that art exists for so many reasons. Um, it is a totally different situation, a pandemic, but in, I've been living in an internal turbulence for a long time by being Venezuelan. So I'm used to not uh, be able I mean, it has been for many years that I can concentrate very well, and it has affected my work, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way, because I always have something inside of my mind, and I'm worried. I'm worried about my family. Like, this feeling that people are having in the pandemic is, a, I mean, is, is a feeling that is it's not new to me, uh, to put it in the most... Um, uh, you know, in the, uh, yeah, to put it in the most elegant way, or in like the way, like, I, I'm used to, to living in fear of something that I can't control. Uh, so in that way, it hasn't affected me at the same time. And I mean, it has affected me, but it's like this thing that thoughts come before doing a, 
artwork and also unfortunately this like fear of like spending money because you don't know what's going to happen so maybe you need that money for something else that is more important than printing some photographs so um, that has been a problem at the same time i think that has great certain amazing constraints and new narratives within my work but it's not fun to work that way but i'm used to it <laughs> what are the ocd drawings you were just referring to <laughs> um well i'm coming back to the drawings on the wall i mean uh, uh, that i did in hall walls to which um I do a big one once a year for the most. And now I'm like doing this drawings that are um, kind of like the piece that you have in your back. They're like this gold drawings. Let me put it here. Like those ones over here. Uh -huh. Like, <laughs> and basically, um, I don't know if, if that was good enough to show. <laughs> I can move it. Basically, okay. I'm for the past years i've been doing this work that is a goal that you have in the back that is about like the mining problem in venezuela and how the extraction of the gold mine has you know it it has really affected the amazons in the you know the natural resources and also economic and politically and all those circumstances so anyway like as a diary i do drawings of gold bricks writing a political thing happened that day for example some of them are like about like how many gold bars were um looted or like were extracted illegally and taken in an airplane um from like venezuela to curacao and then to uh, the netherlands for example so i have a body of work that's related to that and in a way it's very calming and soothing to do the drawings because it's very ocdc um i know Part of a big part of being an artist in New York, uh, no matter what part of New York you're in, is um, as it is everywhere, as it is here too, is um, the social aspect of going to openings, seeing friends, um, and uh, you know being in that kind of environment. Which uh, you know we had an opening that we were installing. You know the week it all came crashing down, we didn't have the opening. Uh, we haven't been open since. Um, how much do you miss um, that social aspect of the art world? Well, I don't miss it yet, but I know I would miss it. <laughs> New York is too social. So in a way, it is nice to feel that your life is about going to your studio. <laughs> and doing your own work and having an introspective time and not having to to relate to that i don't miss it yet because i enjoy it because i it's part of my life so in a way it feels like a nice break but i will miss it very soon i'm not missing it right now but i will <laughs> like i i enjoy what it brings i enjoy like seeing what people create and i enjoy all the i i, I enjoy my friends minds and their artwork so but so far at this moment, I'm enjoying the quiet time. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting, because that reminds me of an artist that I showed years ago, Esther Partegas, who is originally from Spain. And I remember asking her once, well, how do you like living and in, in working in Brooklyn? And she said, well, I like it, but the problem is it's hard to find studio time because you have to go to all these openings because people have to see you and you have to be seen and uh, people have to be reminded that you're around. So it, it you know, you're you're making a living and you're going to social things and then there's only a minimum time left to go to the studio and sometimes no time at all. So uh, it's interesting that you're pointing out that now is the time you're getting studio time. Yeah, I mean, now that things are calmer. First, at the first month, so like, I just didn't have any desire to come to the studio nor any desire, I, I mean, I feel like anybody, this, this whole, whole thing is so strange that however anybody can cope with it, that's great. Uh, for me, it was like having introspective time and kind of enjoying this. Like one of the things that I've enjoyed about this, well, there's not many things that I have enjoyed, but the thing, I mean, I'm okay, but like, but one of the things that I have enjoyed is like slowing down and um it's something that i want to bring to my to the new reality that will come 
and the slowing down in the simple things. I mean, not it sounds silly, but like even like when it's raining, there was nothing else I could do but to listen to the rain because I couldn't concentrate very well reading. There's a moment where you can't see any more bad movies and the good movies, you're just, don't, <laughs> your mind is not there for it. So um, slowing down and enjoying the little things have, have been very nice. And at the end, I think it's going to be good for my creative or anybody, any artist's creative process. Do you think you're going to be able to maintain that slowing down? Is that sustainable uh, once um, this has sort of passed us? Or will we uh, resort to, you know, our old habits? Or have you thought about how you might sustain that slowed down aspect? I don't, I mean, I, I, I've thought about how but i don't know if i really would be able to <laughs> um i was like i should buy a dog <laughs> so i can take them to the park they take the dog to the park and spend that time that way so i don't know if that's true at the same time i do like new york and i like how crazy it is and eventually i don't miss it yet but I eventually will miss like the subway and the people and I, I love biking and it's harder right now in the summer because I really like New York in summer. I know some people don't like that it's hot, but I like actually it slows down New York in the summer and you go to the beach and it's super fun and it has an energy that is exciting. So in a way, I, I guess I, I'm not sure how I'm going to sustain it, but I hope I can. I hope I can find a way because I think it's good for people to slow down. So uh, knowing that uh, we don't know what the new normal is, nobody does, even though some people pretend to know, uh, whatever normal, whatever that is, returns, what is one of the first things, big or little, that you would like to do? when when things are come back yeah um i i like dogs a lot <laughs> i think i would like to hug all the dogs in the park and my fort green park is full of dogs and you know this thing of that of seeing the others like if they're the enemies is i hate it i just it's like the hardest part for me and just being able to to smile to people and that nobody looks at you like you're going to be the one that's going to contage them and you don't feeling like you're the one that's going to contage them anyway all that dynamic that this has brought is what i hope ends and that just walking in the street can be normal that's what i miss the most that's a good question that's uh, a good answer so listen thank you very much for taking some time today uh to yeah. talk to us uh it's been really nice to see you again and I hope that um, I hope that you do get to get outside and smile at someone and have them smile back uh, again real soon. So thank you, Esperanza. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Bye bye.